Well hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Mike here, and it's time for more hacking on my Naboo. Uh, been doing a lot of coding. Um, I, I had to get away from it for a couple of days to take care of some other business, and for the next week or so, I probably won't be able to do much with it. But, I have made some progress, and I just wanted to show you. There's been an almost complete rewrite, basically, of a lot of what I had in here before, just because... Well, I found that a lot of my subroutines were duplicating code. Uh, they were all trying to uh, write out the, the, the right position to the VDP for the next character. Uh, they were all trying to reconcile the X and Y positions to make sure that nothing was out of bounds. And it's like, oh, there's a lot of duplication here. So now, you know, I've got one procedure that uh, they all call to set the next right position. There's one procedure to reconcile the X and Y positions to make sure nothing's out of bounds, to make sure if we need to wrap, we wrap. If we need to scroll, we scroll. That kind of thing. There's a lot less duplication. A lot of the procedures are a lot shorter and easier to understand now without all that duplicated code in them. And I've added a few extra features. So let me zoom in on the screen here and we'll turn on the old Naboo and see what we got here. So here we go. Okay, so as you can see we're up to version 0.5.5. Yes, there's been a lot of subversions between then and now. Oh look, what else have we got on the screen? What is that? Could that possibly be a cursor? Yes, it could possibly be a cursor. Um, right now it's just an underscore, but I can change it to any character I want. Um, but it's an underscore, works for me. Uh, some of you may be wondering when I'm typing what this character is that comes up occasionally. If I push two keys at once, I'll get that. And what I'm going to do is eventually I'm going to, in my get care um, procedure, I'm going to just filter that out because it's very annoying. But, but, I also have... Backspace now. Look at that. Yeah, so if we do make an error, push two keys at once, whatever, we can backspace and get rid of it. So yeah, I've got backspace. And we have wrapping. It will wrap around if it gets to the end of the screen. You know, we've got 40 characters, 0 to 39. You know, it gets to 39th character. The next one's going to be down here. But look what happens if I backspace. We have back wrapping too. It will wrap back around that away. Yeah. So made a lot of changes, made a lot of improvements, um, and um, I got to clean up the code a lot. There's a lot of stuff that's commented out in here, just because you know, like I said, there, I rewrote a lot of stuff and just commented out a lot of the original stuff. So I need to clean it up a little bit. Make sure I don't break anything during the cleanup process, and I will get this version of the code on my blog probably by about yeah but before this video comes out on youtube i'll make sure it's on there before this video comes out on youtube if you want to you know download it and play with it on your own um it's i think it's a lot better code than what i've been putting out so far i i really worked hard on cleaning it up a lot so um yeah so there's that um next for my next trick i'm going to start integrating parts of the jazz 80 monitor that I have for the Teletext System Master and my Jazz80 breadboard computer. I'm going to start integrating parts of them into this. Like I said, for the next week though, I'm probably not going to have time to work on this. Got other stuff going on, but that's what I want to do. So look for my next update in a week or so, maybe a little longer. And hopefully I'll have parts of the Jazz80 monitor um, integrated into this so we actually be able to do some real stuff here besides just have you know a TV typewriter so getting there getting there very soon now I also want to address a few questions I've been getting a lot of questions and a lot of them are just repeats of the same thing and um, I have put links in all of these Nabu hacking videos down below in the description of the video so check out those links because they will answer a lot of your questions. But uh, one question I get a lot of is, what are you using to program your EE proms? Well, I have this old um, XG ECU programmer. It's a model TL8662+. Well, this is obsolete. Um, you can still find these, 
on uh, Amazon, some old stock ones. Uh, but um, the company that makes this may has a newer version out. And if I were you, I would get the newer version because it's um, it supports more chips out of the box, and they will be providing updates for it. You know, long after they stop updating this. I mean, I I, I update the uh, firmware on this fairly regularly just to keep it up to date with uh, whatever chips are out there. But sooner or later, they're going to stop providing firmware updates for this. So I would get the new one. I'll put a link in the description of this video to where you can get the new version of this that this company is selling. And what you want to do is get, if you look around on like Amazon, AliExpress, or whatever, people who are selling them, um, you can get the bare bones programmer, but I would recommend getting one that comes with all of the adapters so that you can program any kind of chip. You know, I don't do just, you know, dual inline plastic chips. Sometimes I'm working with other stuff and all those adapters for all those different form factors come in handy. It'll cost you maybe a little extra, 15, 20 bucks, but having all those adapters, someday you will need them, okay? Also comes with a chip puller, which is nice. Um, another question I get a lot of is, um, what EEPROMs e -E am I using? Well, I am using, right now, Atmel 28C64 EEPROMs. I've got a couple of them here and I just sort of, you know, one's in the machine and I'll program up the next version of the software in another one and then I'll swap them. Um, far as I know, these are not being made anymore. Okay, it's an 8K by 8 EEPROM. Um, you can maybe find some new old stock on places like Amazon, AliExpress. You'll probably pay pretty good for them. Um, I got mine on eBay. And I got them really cheap. They're used. You know, what the heck? Just, you know, erase them. They're, that's what they are. They're erasable. So I just erased them. Whatever code was on them. And I've just been reusing them ever since. You can get them cheap on eBay. There's plenty of people selling them. So, you know, look around for those. Now, again, this brings up another point. This is an 8K by 8 EEPROM. And the NABU comes from the factory wired for a 4K by 8 EEPROM. Okay? The, this will work. This will work in your NABU without making any modifications to the hardware. This will work in the NABU, but you'll only be able to access the lower 4K of the EEPROM, okay? Now there is, they call it a jumper on the board, and I'll take a close-up picture of it. And what you have to do is you have to cut a trace and you have to solder a bodge wire in there to turn this machine into one that can access 8K of EEPROM. All right. So you can do that if you want. So far, I've just been working within the 4K. Sooner or later, I'm sure I'm going to have to make that modification. Um, I won't be able to cram everything I want into... Um, 4K. In fact, I won't be able to cram everything I want on this machine into 8K. Sooner or later, i got to look at mass storage solutions. So that's where we're going down the road, but that's, that's a long way off yet. So, you know, don't get too excited about that. Sooner or later, though, mass storage will happen. But, uh, yeah, you can, you can go with a, uh, you can go with an 8K EEPROM and it'll work just fine in your 4K NABU. You can make that modification if you like on the board, and then you can use all 8K of it. Um, don't know if you can use higher density EEPROMs in this or not. I'd have to, I have to think about that. I have to look at the pinouts of the EEPROMs. Like a, I've got some 28C256s. You know, they're the same number of pins, but I don't know if it'll work or not. I have to look and see how the socket is wired in the schematics and compare it with the pinout of the EEPROM and see if that would work. If I were you, I would, you know, unless you want to do that yourself, figure that out, I would just stick with like, try and find some 28C64s and use them, okay, because I know they work. I can't guarantee 
anything else will work all right so yeah so there's some commonly asked questions um, and again I'm gonna be really busy for the next week so so if you ask questions in the comments of this video or email me I may not be able to get back to you just because I'm gonna be so busy with other stuff but hey thanks a lot for watching these videos um, I appreciate it leave your comments and suggestions you guys have some really great ideas there's a lot of collective wisdom out there in the retro computing community so keep that stuff coming. I really appreciate it. And uh, check out my main channel, Omega Geek 64. There's good stuff going on over there where I render down a lot of old electronic equipment to recover the gold and silver and other precious metals from them. But not everything gets rendered down. Some stuff I like to play with. All right. So thanks again for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye.